Good evening um, and good afternoon. My name is Akiko Ito. I'm chief of the program on disability at the, the Department of Economic and Social Affairs uh, of the United Nations, um, which is also uh, the secretariat for the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Um, and I'm very pleased to, uh, to be a moderator for this very uh, important panel. And the, the theme of this panel is overcoming the challenge of disability and marriage. And this session will look into the normative dimension of this theme, as well as addressing a more practical um, real life situations that could uh, give us um, a, a very good example as to how those normative framework can be applied in, in the lives of, uh, of, of people and people with disabilities. And today, um, uh, let me just um, introduce you to three panelists. But before I, I go right into this introduction, I would like to uh, just to give you how we are going to use our very precious uh, about 45 minutes. Uh, first three minutes uh, will be spent uh, in just introducing our, our um, speakers and followed by a, uh, questions to these speakers. And then they are going to give us um, their answers. And then we will start um, asking them to engage uh, in interactive discussion and followed by a question and answers. So without further ado, yes? Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> okay, so without further ado, um, I'm going to introduce my uh, first speaker, Dr. Takashi Izutsu. Dr. Izutsu uh, is Associate Professor of University of Tokyo, and he's, a, he's also a Global Coordinator for the UNITAR University of Tokyo uh, Forum on Disability and SDGs in Japan. Next will be uh, Dr. Musa uh, Charaf uh, Charafedin. Uh, he's uh, President and of uh, Friends of Disabled Association in Lebanon. Um, the third speaker, um, the third uh, discussant is, Ms., uh, is Dr. Mustafa Atia. He's a chair of Lee's Disabled People's Organizations and he's a board member of the Disability Rights UK, United Kingdom. So, so we have these three distinguished uh, discussants today. First, um, I, I'm going to ask um, Dr. Ijutsu this question. Um, may I uh, start, Dr. Ijutsu? Yes, please. So, yes. What are the challenges faced by persons with disabilities in marriage? How do the SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, um, tackle the challenges of disability within marriage? Thank you very much, Akiko. It is always a great honor for me to work with you and thank you for your extraordinary global leadership. And I would like to thank um, Doha International Family Institute and Qatar Foundation for inviting me for this important event. And it is my great honor to join this session with extraordinary distinguished panelists as well as distinguished participants. Um, I'd like to start with um, normative frameworks at the international level. Um, I would like to share some of the key points of those global normative frameworks today on disability. Um, as you know, the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, CRPD, was adopted by the United Nations General Assembly in 2006. A convention is very strong since it is legally binding among those countries that ratified it. More than 180 states, including Qatar, have ratified the convention. And first of all, CRPD, the convention has come up with a new conceptual framework of disability. In short, the concept of disability has changed from the medical model to the social model. Before, in the medical model, a disability has been perceived as a health issue, which requires charity or a medical treatment in the past. So the focus was on health conditions of individuals. 
However, since the CRPD in 2006, the new model, the social model, is mainstreamed globally. And the big difference from the medical model is that the social model considers disability as a result of social barriers rather than a medical condition. Social barriers include, for instance, lack of environmental accessibilities, lack of informational accessibility and institutional accessibility, as well as the existence of attitudinal barriers in our mind. For example, the stairs, stairways leading into a building can be a disabling factor for a wheelchair user. Then we can add a ramp or elevator and there will be no disability. And one of the key messages in the convention is nothing about us without us. When something related to someone's life is determined, the process should include the person himself or herself in discussion, decision making and monitoring. And when it comes to family life and marriage, decisions should be made by each individual together with partners. However, even very important decisions such as being married or not, keeping fertility or not, having a child or not, among others, are sometimes decided without discussion and consent of persons with disabilities. Globally, there still are many cases of forced sterilization or forced abortion for persons with disabilities reported. And the Convention has a specific article on family, which is Article 23 on respect for home and the family. It includes need to take measures to eliminate discrimination against persons with disabilities in all matters relating to marriage, family, parenthood, and relationships, including adoption. This includes the right to marry and to found a family on the basis of free and full consent, the rights to decide freely and responsibly on the number and spacing of their children, and to have access to age-appropriate information reproductive and family planning education, and the right to retain their fertility. Further, it states responsibility to ensure that children with disabilities will not experience concealment, abandonment, neglect, segregation, or separation from his or her parents against their will due to disabilities. And finally, the convention also includes responsibility of states to render appropriate support to persons with disabilities in their child rearing when needed. And when the immediate family is unable to care for a child, every effort must be taken to provide alternative care within the wider family in the community. I think these are some key points from the perspective of global normative frameworks, namely the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, reflecting the current challenges faced by persons with disabilities in marriage. And the second question uh, Akiko uh, gave me was about SDGs. And um, I'd like to briefly touch upon that. Among 17 SDG goals, which is the global priorities toward 2030, as you know, five goals integrated disability. These include goals on education, employment, equality, sustainable cities, including disaster resilient communities and the global partnerships and seven targets out of 169 targets specifically mention disability, including disability disaggregated data collection. Um, family matter and marriage is related to many goals in SDGs, but probably more so in goal three on good health and well-being, specifically on target 3.7, which is ensuring universal access to sexual and reproductive health care services, including for family planning, information and education, and the integration of reproductive health, in, in, reproductive health into national strategies and programs by 2030. It also relates to goal five on gender equality, specifically on the target 5.6, universal access to sexual and reproductive health and reproductive rights as agreed in accordance with the program of action of ICPD, the International Conference on Population and Development, and the Beijing Platform for Action. According to the United Nations flagship report on disability and development, data from some countries show that about 30% of births by mothers with disabilities are not attended by a skilled health worker, 
and 20% of married women with disabilities have an unmet need for family planning. These, these percentages are higher in rural areas. Without access to sexual reproductive health, they can be at higher risk of unwanted pregnancies, maternal morbidity and maternal mortality, and other issues. As indicated in its slogan, leaving no one behind and reaching the farthest behind first in SDGs, persons with disabilities are the top priority group in all the efforts related to marriage and family. However, in many cases, policies, systems, budget, and human resources have not been installed accordingly in many countries. As to disability, especially reality tend to be invisible or not known and so forgotten or left behind. So a starting point can be to start with collecting disability disaggregated data as depicted in SDG 17 in our day-to-day -day operation. So the reality, the real situation, magnitude, and needs and gaps around persons with disabilities in the area of family matters, including marriage, will be visible and properly understood so that the policies and practice can be transformed into inclusive and accessible. The other priority is to include persons with disabilities in discussions, planning, decision-making, and monitoring related to policy, programs, and research related to marriage and family. It is very useful to hire, to include persons with disabilities in the team, and also to develop constructive partnerships with organizations of persons with disabilities. But it is also important to bear in mind that the individual needs are vastly different and it is necessary to try to listen to various people's opinion, including those who are with physical impairment, mental impairment, intellectual disabilities, and sensory impairments. And it is very important to listen to voices of silent majority, as well as silent minorities too. So in conclusion, based on the principles of leaving no one behind and intersectionality of SDGs, we need to integrate a disability perspective in all the efforts to achieve SDGs with promoting disability disaggregated data and partnerships with persons with disabilities. Thank you very much. Back to you, Akiko. Thank you so much. Um, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ijutsu, for providing us with um, a comprehensive um, uh, again, discussion um, on international normative framework on family, uh, marriage, and persons with disabilities in the context of uh, the global agenda, which is the um, uh, 2030 development agenda, and also reference to SDGs. I think we, you already gave us um, a policy recommendation, so we will, we'll actually come back to that. Um, I guess, especially in data uh, uh, um, disaggregation and, and also um, relevant information uh, gathering. Um, may I now um, ask uh, Dr. Musa Jarafeddin, uh, President of uh, Friends of Disabled Association, Lebanon, to, um, to discuss the following. Um, globally associated associations, global, uh, globally associations and NGOs are doing a lot for persons with disabilities. What are the best practices that you can share with us? As a father, uh, what advice uh, would you be able to give to other parents with grown, with, um, with grown children with disabilities? As a father of persons with disability and as an international um, experience, there are a lot of good practices around the world and there are a lot of uh, marriages, successful marriages, but the majority of the, the, the uh, the idea about marrying persons with disability or intermarried or the right of reproductive, reproductive health is not very well received uh, around the world, uh, specifically in the Middle um, East uh, and North African countries, because there are a lot of values, norms, and traditions which are not very well uh, uh, received by persons with disability and a lot of kind of uh, of, the, of uh, rules or tra traditional rules, social traditional rules, um, and don't uh, don't give free 
access to such questions because uh, the, the the values and the, the the values and the norms are a little bit against that there was a lot of uh, there are a lot of successful experiences but the majority of experiences are not uh, very well st stated in the arab countries that is the, the i think in 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 western countries and in industrialized countries the the story is different and it's more uh, it's more um, uh, open for that regard And as a father of persons with intellectual disability, this makes the, the, the problem much more complicated because uh, the, the certain rules and certain social traditions uh, impose a kind of uh, courtesy on the a kind of uh, courtesy or a kind of substitutional uh, decision is imposed on the person with intellectual disability they are they have to to be represented by another person to 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 make any decisions about marriage or any decisions in in life in general uh, I think now it's not the time of my presentation. You are asking me a general question, yes? Yes. My presentation will be, will uh, be coming later. Uh, yes, thank you so much for... for so, so, so your, um, those were your answers to, to the questions that I, that I posed. Yes, okay. Yes, thank you. Right. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so thank you very much for sharing with us um, again. Uh, what what is what is actually um, what is it that you know we need to really to uh, to be aware of you know in terms of our discourse, human rights discourse on persons with disabilities and marriage. Uh, then um, again, different um, social social values and norms that may uh, require a different. Uh, Again, um, approach to to the discourse that you know uh, that that perhaps you know what, what we at the United Nations perhaps there's certain translation that that requires uh, for uh, for the global norms to be more effective um, at the level of regional um, um, again uh, pursuit of um, of human rights and their their inclusion in relation to uh, to equality and and marriage for persons with disabilities. Uh, may I now turn to uh, Dr. Mostafa Atia, uh, chair of Lee's uh, Disabled People's uh, Organization, and he's also a board member of the Disability Rights UK. Um, now. Can you share with us your personal story when entering into marriage? Uh, the second question uh, is, what policies and programs do you think should be implemented to support persons with disabilities when entering into marriage? Right, thank you very much, Ikiko. Can you hear me quite well? Yes, perfectly. Okay. So um, first, thank you very much, um, Ikiko, and it is my great pleasure um, um, to, uh, um, to 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 meet you and to um, know a lot about your um, global um, work and in, in the field of um, inclusive development. Um, definitely, special thanks to uh, Qatar Foundation and uh, uh, Doha International Center for inviting me um, to speak today. Um, I will um, I will use my. Uh, my personal story as an example to answer post questions actually. So yes, I'm a blind person uh, born in Egypt um, with um, like completed a segregated education in blind school, moving forward to um, university, Egyptian, one of the Egyptian universities um, to study English department then traveled um, um, to the UK to complete my MA and PhD in disability and inclusive development. And I'm, and I'm working currently as well as a researcher, as an international consultant. I'm not saying that just to introduce myself or to give a brief background about, uh, about my profile, but rather to tell that um, 
I reiterate all what has been said my uh, previous uh, post distinguished colleagues as the, uh, the, the, um, the many, the various um, um, challenges that face um, um, marriage and for, for disabled uh, person to have the equal chance to choose someone uh, 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 to choose someone someone um, oh, sorry yeah uh, yeah um, so definitely there are a multitude of factors such as as we said associated stigma segregated education um, uh, difficulty accessing uh, disabled people of decent and equal employment and all of those reflecting on the community understanding to what does disabled person mean what are the capabilities of persons who got an impairment? How that person could be able, especially if he is um, uh, like, like disabled men. We always have a problem that people think that this person will not be able to lead a family because he is disabled. You know, the individual model of disability and the charitable approach and individual tragedy attached to the, prop the disability problem is always behind um, these factors. and. I'm not like to, to make it in a simple words. I mean, I was in a blind school. So that means I was not mainstreamed in an inclusive education, not being mainstreamed in public um, in, in public and in, in, um, um, secondary school. When I went to university, it was really hard for people to understand my impairment. And what does blind person means what he can do and what he cannot do. So consequently, when I went to uh, one a family and say I would like to marry um, uh, which uh, to marry my wife, which is, she is my wife now. There was lots of resistance because basically people doesn't know, like how she is my she is my daughter. She is the best person that I have in my life. Like how I can give her to someone who is has limited capacities. So always people link that you are disabled with the, with this thing that you have limited capacity because basically you are physically sensory. A mental have, have a mental impairment. This is actually um, was a problem because with lots of chats and discussions and questions, and lots of stressful times that I have to pair with to be able to convince a person who wouldn't see a blind a, the her parent who wouldn't see a blind person before. I absolutely accept all of his questions because he'd know nothing about about disabled people because of segregations. He may have lots of associated stigma that came from films and cinema and theater and how those people has been uh, has been portrayed. And at the end of the day, um, I, I should I should pair with that. And then um, um, like until I've been reaching uh, reaching my goal to marry to marry my wife. And what, what's interesting that I can share here about my story is the issue of labeling. We chosen we chose each other. We chose each other without labeling. I'm not thinking for Mustafa the white or um, Yumna the black person, Mustafa the disabled. I'm just thinking of the person regarding the lab labeling, regarding the stereotypical image approach. And that leads me to your second question, which is very interesting about policies. And definitely, as everyone else, I, I would suggest um, awareness raising campaigns definitely not only about marriage because if you promote and mainstream disability rights on all other strategies policy framework action plans and definitely as has been said by the first speaker to speak about implementation of sdgs and the uncrpd which definitely are used as an important guiding framework to mainstream disabled people rights in more than 11 references of SDGs is, is, is an important factor. So number one would be an awareness raising program that promotes and introduce disabled, pers disabled people to, com to community, not as heroes, not as supernaturals, not as a product protagonists, but just as people. We need to introduce disabled people in a normative structure because the problem is that although we have lots of media like mass media talking about disabled people they are always talking them in an in an untraditional format so people think that person who is either 
a supernatural person or maybe that person needs care and needs um, a charity work so um, second one would be uh, second it would be mainstreaming disability as I said into various strategies and policies videos should be done and documentaries should be done by disabled people themselves as we said we need a meaningful participation we need people to hear disabled people voices up in front we need to do that in Arabic we need to do that in English we need disabled people voices demands challenges not only educational and employment but also you know sociological and psychological challenges to be elevated to the heart of the policy discussions. We need to equip them with knowledge before inviting them to policy consultations. Those may sound indirectly related to marriage, but I think they are affecting that disabled person will be seen in a normal framework, and that means he can learn, work, enjoy his life, marry, and like everyone else, um, like using the equal opportunity principles within the UNCRPD. I don't want to take much time, because, but, but definitely other maybe roundtable discussions should be. Um, I, I, I really appreciate the choice of topic from um, Count Qatar Foundation, because it's really something that we need to elaborate on more and more. Lots of conferences are about employment or education, but not much about this topic. So thanks very much, Kiko, for the time and uh, for um, Qatar Foundation inviting me as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Atiyah. Um, and thank you so much for elaborating um, what it means to really to, um, to address and to really to, to pursue equality um, in marriage and and a marriage, of course, in, in relation to uh, social life or all other aspects of social life and development. And so, uh, so yes, thank you. For, thank you so much for, for your personal sharing with us your personal experience and, um, and also um, helping us to understand how you see uh, those key policy rec uh, key recommendations uh, to be uh, the key um, steps for uh, for, for, for equality uh, and then taking action on, toward equality. So now I would like to uh, go back to, um, again, the three of you before we open the floor to uh, Q question and answers, Q and A, question and answers. Um, so Dr. Iz I'm just going, I'm going back to Dr. Izutsu. So Dr. Izutsu, um, so now um, we have, um, again, heard your um, a comprehensive um, discussion. Um, and followed by, a, by uh, again, a more um, you know, practical experiences and personal experiences. And also, based on that, those experiences, uh, there were some policy, there were uh, recommendations in order uh, for those normative frameworks to be, uh, to take, um, to take concrete forms uh, and to make uh, difference in the lives of people with disabilities and their communities. Um, so could you perhaps, um, uh, again, um, add uh, perhaps your, um, your comments to, um, to, to the other speakers and also provide us with, um, um, with, uh, with, with your, um, uh, with, with your views and, 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 um, and perhaps, you know, some recommendations once again. Thank you, Akiko, and thank you very much for uh, all the wonderful uh, presentations from uh, distinguished speakers. Uh, I totally agree that uh, both disability and also family and marriage um, issues are really socially bound and culturally um, different and uh, translate how to trans how we can translate those normative frameworks into locally and socially adaptable forms into action is one of the biggest challenges especially in the stigmatized and you know segregated uh, communities um, and for instance in Japan um, we are still trying to change the policies to try to uh, in compliance with the convention, but there are still so many practical uh, challenges existing. And that starts from, 
you know, uh, discrimination and stigma in our mind. And also there are many different opinions from different people. Um, and it's been really challenging to come up with a kind of consensus to reach to uh, the policy agreement or implementation. So, um, yeah, I mean, moving forward into implementation, there are challenges, but I think at the same time, there are many good practices uh, reported from many different regions. I mean, for instance, in Japan, there are many uh, organizations of persons with disabilities are now sharing their own experiences as parents or as you know, a spouse. And uh, that has been really uh, inspiring discussion. And I really feel that the foundation is getting formed for the next step. So um, I think that could be um, a starting point. And more information on family and marriage, which um, could be really um, socially, culturally bound, but at the same time, that could be really uh, useful for other cultures. Um, so I, I really hope the um, exchange of good practices will be promoted and the global partnership will be promoted in this area. Thank you, Akiko. Thank you. Thank you. So Dr. Um, Dr. Charaf Bedin, uh, I'm going, to, uh, we have a number of questions now um, from the floor. Um, let me just ask you this question. How can a busy working parents teach their children to be more emotionally intelligent? In your experience, in what ways <laughs> can, can we move beyond the stigma of disability in marriage in Arab societies and beyond? Uh, uh, it's a matter of traditions and values which are uh, running for ages. Uh, as it mentioned before, uh, the stigma and the kind of um, uh, relationship among the people. Uh, persons with disability are observed as uh, the uh, people uh, with uh, without kind of um, uh, uh, rights uh, the, 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 the item 12 or legal capacity of the united Nations convention uh, gave uh, them uh, an ideal uh, an ideal uh, rights to, to to perform or to imp implement however most of the arab countries did preser have preservations on the implementation of, of item 12, which is independent living and, uh, uh, and legal capacity. Even in the uh, many banks and many, and many, many other uh, institutions doesn't give persons with disability uh, equal rights as others in, in, in performing their rights. And this uh, stands uh, as a very difficult barrier for persons with disability to to uh, to be uh, to choose uh, their proper to put their proper decision in in, in an application, and uh, the, the, there are a lot of things which should be done before that, as uh, was said before, well, before there should be a kind of capacity building for persons with disabilities and their families. To, to, to teach them, to train them how to, 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 to enjoy their, their rights, uh, their right to choose and their right to decide. And this is a real a challenge in the, especially in the third world and especially in the Arab countries uh, due to many religious and other kind of limitations which are imposed on the, the social lives of persons with disability and on the others. Uh, the, 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 the system of custody is already uh, having been, um, having been um, uh, removed yet. It's still there in many, uh, uh, in many, many instances and in many life uh, situations. And this uh, thing, leave its impact on the on the reality of the life of persons with disability and their families 
the most challenging uh, question is about persons with intellectual disability, which has a lot of barriers and a lot of limitations and the, the, the education or the, the capacity building in that regard uh, is not very well opened even for people without disability. For instance, the sex education is not, is not implemented in the curriculum of schools in, in the Arab countries. Sex education is a kind of stigma and it is a taboo where you cannot touch it. And this also plays a uh, significant role in, in, uh, in, in forming an obstacle for marriage and for the installation of uh, institution of marriage. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, do you do you have kind of recommendations for specific solutions uh, of all of those rather difficult? Of course, you know there are many problems that that uh, that we encountered, and also in Arab region as well. But do you have any uh, specific recommendations for uh, for getting closer to solution, not not necessarily? Sure, solutions sure, per se, sure, but. sure. There are solutions, but this will take time. And uh, the, it's not only the policy or the, uh, the bylaws which resolve that. The resolving that is to how to, can we uh, change the traditions and the values and the norms of the society, of society which will take a lot of time. We are trying as persons with disability, as uh, parents of persons with disability, as disability community, we are trying to move forward in that regard, but it will need a lot of time. We have to join for effort with other human rights uh, organizations mm -hmm. in the society to, 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 to change the, the, uh, the ongoing uh, traditions and uh, on in, in going norms. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. some, some of these changes is taking place for, uh, for persons with other disabilities. But for a person with intellectual disability, it's much more serious and much more uh, difficult. Mm -hmm. see. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Atiyah. So from your experience, how do you see inclusive education and disabled uh, and, and person, disabled persons, persons with disabilities, could be implemented. Um, and what are the challenges in our countries? So, what are the, some of the from your from your own experience? How do you see inclusive education? I think you mentioned um, uh, you you know you you were not included in inclusive education, but now uh, again after uh, uh, going into um, specialized school uh, for for the blind, um, how do you see? inclusive education and and um, yeah. how can we implement inclusive education for those people with disabilities in our countries? Thank you very much and um, I will wear my uh, consultancy and research researcher hat here um, as, uh, as I did lots mm -hmm. of um, studies um, uh, with many international organizations about barriers to um, either education or higher education and I can confirm that definitely um, um, we have um, an, an increasing um, awareness and attention given through national and global discourses of rights of um, uh, disabled people to access education and higher education either through conventions uh, which has been translated to national policies through ministerial decrees and action plans but this is unfortunately mm -hmm. why the gap between what has been found in policies and the practice. Yes, mm -hmm. different different has been issued ministerial decrees for um, disabled children to access normal education. But and as we said again, um, the, the associated stigma that 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 found and the scarcity of data about the the, the problems that have the in practice. You know the practice is happening when you involve disabled children within schools is an, within public schools in another issue we still we still have resistance of teachers to accept disabled children within public schools we still have uh, some somehow difficulty of buying equipments or res or creating establishing resource rooms for um, um, disabled children to be able to access their educate their, their materials in an um, accessible 
uh, for that. We still have mm -hmm. uh, missions, problems within higher education. You know, disabled people, students in many universities doesn't have the right to access all schools and faculty. And even if they have that right, you have a problem to mm -hmm. reasonably accommodate um, them during and during exams, course of life, um, I mean, during some, one consultancy I've done, there are, done with USAID, there are multitude of barriers for disabled students to access um, equivalent education. And actually, it was a really a problem for me. So I was studying in segregated schools and moving to one of the Egyptian universities to complete oh. my faculty of English mm -hmm. department. But when I traveled mm -hmm. to the UK to do my MA and PhD, can you hear me, yeah? Yes, I can okay. hear you, so, yes. To study MA and PhD in disability and inclusive development, the way that the universities designed an assessments to know what's your needs, not, not as blind, but as Mustafa, because not because this is an important point, we need to think more of the customization, not because we are all blind people, we need the same treatments. There are different treatments mm -hmm. according to backgrounds and qualifications. And those mm -hmm. are some of the um, barriers, but definitely we should also mention the advantages of now lots of funding and international organizations starting projects and um, mm -hmm. like pilot means to, to try and as the promotion mm -hmm. long term process that takes time to change the associates mm -hmm. with Arab countries. And we should say that they are even here, like lots of Lots of parents that I'm aware here in the UK, in Leeds and, and Manchester, decided to go to homeschooling because basically they feel like like their home would be more accessible than a, 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 a public school. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think unfortunately we are running out of time. Uh, we have just mm. one last question. Um, just maybe getting back to Dr. Charafedin. Um, how does how does uh, mar uh, this, how does disability affect um, marriage financially? And this is just the last question that we we, we see from the floor. Financially, we have to be very careful because the right to to, to work and employment, uh, employment, employability of personal disability is is very low, and the percentage of employment of personal disability is about twenty or twenty five percent. Seventy five percent of personal disability are either not working at all or in the field of informal. Uh, type of uh, employment, uh, which will not reproduce a lot of funds for the future. Now we, we come to the person with disability who belong to wealthy families. These things applied, but as all, all, everybody knows, person with disability and their families are among the poorest in the society. And to, to, to make them able to pay or to, to cover the expenses of a person with disability and his wife his, uh, or her, her husband is very hard and very difficult. And most of person with disability who got married, they are living with their parents to, so that their parents can cover their expenses. This is a tradition in the, in the, in the Arab world that uh, extended family and a, a house where parents and their sons and their spouses are living in the same, uh, in the same place. Um, of course, the modern style of life is not like that uh, starting from 10 or 15 years ago. But that doesn't mean that person with disability uh, are living, uh, uh, can stand to live alone, except in a very rare, uh, rare, in very rare uh, occasions. Persons without intellectual, who do, don't have intellectual disability, may have um, uh, less difficulties than persons with intellectual disability who got married, if they have the chance to be married. Uh, as I said, the, the, the financial resources and the financial responsibility 
uh, about the ongoing life of person with disability is not an easy task and um, most of them will depend on external support, financial support. I would like to remind you that not all the Arab countries do have a kind of allowances or uh, a kind mm -hmm. of social cash transfer or uh, social security or social uh, services which can look directly towards marrying or ma marrying couple. This is, uh, there is, uh, there is not in, not in all countries, maybe in the Gulf area, they may have some kind of allowances or some kind of financial support. But in other than Gulf uh, area, most of the marriages are going without any financial support from the public sector, from the government. Uh, most of them are uh, getting support from the surrounding, from the relatives, and very rare who can uh, who can live independently. Uh, persons without intellectual disability, with other disability, they can live uh, uh, independent life, but not as much in percentage as others. The majority of person with disability are not living independently in their marriage life. And the care of children and the care, the cover of the expenses of raising children is uh, very expensive, very expensive, and is not uh, very well covered by social security, or there is no social protection floors enough to cover their, 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 their expenses. Thank you very much. Um, th thank you, uh, Dr. Ch uh, Chafedin. Um, I, I think we need to close uh, now, but I'm very grateful to, uh, to these distinguished speakers. I'm sure that our audience would join me in thanking Dr. Izutu, Dr. Ch uh, Chafedin, and Dr. Atia for their um, wonderful uh, presentations and also uh, their um, uh, their individual uh, and professional um, views on marriage and, and disability. Uh, we were able to address the normative framework and then we, we uh, and at the global level, regional level, uh, and also um, uh, individual levels. And I think it's, it's a lens that you know, we can use to pursue equality for persons with disabilities um, as in the convention and promote uh, the the inclusion of persons with disabilities in 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 uh, SDGs uh, and in at national local local national uh, global levels by for and with persons with disabilities. So, uh, thank you very much. I would like to thank uh, everyone, the audience, and also the organizers. Um, and this is the ending of the the, the second day. And uh, I would like to remind you that there will be another exciting session on day three. Thank you very much. The, the, the session is closed. <laughs>